If you've got an airplane that's got some sport or 3D capabilities and you want to use those flaps along with your ailerons to give you that full length aileron control, I'm going to show you how to set up that mix. And of course you want to be able to use your flaps as intended as well. So I'm going to run through my config real quick and show you that right now I'm just moving my aileron stick and you can see my ailerons are going up and down just like you'd expect them to. And then I've got my flaps on my right slider over here. So I'm going to drop the flaps and you can see they're moving also the way we'd expect them to. So completely independent operation, and that's the way we normally expect our models to work. However, if you really wanna get after it and give a lot of authority to your ailerons, you can mix your flaps and ailerons to work together. One caveat I'll give you to this, a lot of times flaps are set so that in the full retract position, that's the extent of the servo travel, and the flaps are kind of level with the wing. You'll want to make sure you set your mechanical linkage correctly so your flaps can travel up and down in order for this to work. Okay, so I'm going to bring my flaps to the parked position. You can see everything is just in line with the trailing edge right now, and I'm going to simply go into high rates, and that's where I'd kind of expect this functionality to take place. So when I go into high rates, now watch what happens when I move my aileron stick my flaps are traveling with my ailerons. That's like a full span aileron control with your flaps. However, I can also still use the flaps. So watch, I'm gonna pull the flaps down into the down position. When they're in the down position, they still operate with the ailerons. So you can still use your flaps and your ailerons together. Let me show you how the mix works. In case you didn't know, I sell these little setup models in my Etsy store. There'll be a link in the description if you'd like to pick one up for yourself. They're really cool for setting up mixes and practicing on your desk before you worry about setting it up on your actual model. Let's jump into the setup. This is a really simple configuration. We'll start by pressing the model button and going to the inputs tab. And on the inputs tab, you can see I've only got two inputs set up aileron and flaps. Now my weights are set up and my directions are set up to work on my model. You might have to use different settings on yours. I can't really tell you what those are gonna be. You just kinda of have to work with your model to figure out what they are. In my case, I use the SB switch or Sierra Bravo as my rate selector. So I only have two options here. SB up and not SB up. That little exclamation mark up front means not. So because I say SB up, what this means is when my SB switch is in the up position, the top rate is selected. And when it's in any other position, mid or down, the bottom option is selected. That's what that bang or exclamation means. It means not. So right now my switch is in the down position. That means not SB up, which means low rates. Now, if I go all the way to the up position, then the high rates are identified. So I've got a weight of 75 and 60 for my aileron and for my flaps, no switches, just assigned to the right slider and I'm going to have a weight of 35. You might also notice I've got a flap curve defined. I'm really not using it for this example. I normally use a flap curve to tell where my midpoint or takeoff flaps are and where my full deployed point is. But right now I've just got it set at negative 100, 0 and 100. So I'm not using the flap curve in this example. Okay, that's it for the inputs. Next up, we'll take a look at the mixer. In my mix, I'm using channels one and two for my starboard aileron and port aileron respectively. You don't strictly need to dedicate a channel to the ailerons because we're really not changing the way the ailerons operate in this setup. But in my case, I just wanted to use two channels. For your flaps, you will need to use two channels because we're changing the way the flaps operate. In a traditional setup, when you operate flaps, they normally travel together. So if you put your flaps on a Y and they're mechanically set up to travel together, they will always both go down or always both come up together. But because we're changing the mode of operation for the flaps, we have to use discrete channels. In my case, I put my starboard flap on channel three and my port flap on channel four. When you first start working on this setup, I recommend you just get your ailerons and flaps working the way they're supposed to first. That'll be really easy. And I'm gonna highlight what that looks like by taking the high rates off. So when I take that off and you focus on what's going on here, we have a very simple configuration. One line for the aileron on the starboard side, one line for the aileron on the port side, one line for the flap on the starboard side, one line for the flap on the port side. That's it. It's a very simple configuration. Now we just simply add the mix. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that I have a rule of thumb when it comes to setting up mixes on Edge TX. I always say you go to the thing that needs to be corrected and you add the thing that does the correcting. In my case, I'm changing the behavior of my flaps. Instead of both going down, I want them to work with the aileron. That's the thing that needs to be corrected. So I went to my flap line and I added a mix 
mix for the thing that does the correcting. The thing that does the correcting in this case is the aileron stick. When I move that stick, that's the thing that's telling my flaps to do something other than what they normally do. So remember, in Edge TX, when you're creating mixes, you focus on the thing that needs correcting by the thing that does the correcting. So that means all I had to do is add a line. And if you don't know how to do that, you simply click right here and you hit insert after. So very simple to do that. And you can see I've got a third line right here. I don't want that in this example. I just wanted to show you how to add one. So I added an aileron mix to my flap line and I used a weight of 80. I could have used a weight of 100, but if you don't want your flaps going the full length, you can kind of detune it a little bit by reducing that rate. And notice that I've got that same SB switch active here. So what this means is when my SB switch is in the up position, that's where the aileron manipulates the flaps. When the SB switch is not in the up position, you can see this is white. That means it's not in effect. So right now my SB switch or my rate switch is in the down position or low rates. When I move it to the up position, that means my ailerons are now having an influence on my flaps. I'll show you what that looks like in the channel monitor so you can better understand. Right now I'm going to pull my rate switch to the low position, which means low rates. And you can see that mix line is now deactivated. And I hit the model button and that brings up our channel monitor. So now when I move my aileron stick, there's no movement on my flaps at all. We're only moving the ailerons. That's what we expect. Now I'm going to push the SB switch into the up position. That's going to activate this mix line. So there we go. That's active now on channels three and four. Now I'll bring the channel monitor up, which will help you see what's going on visually. We'll hit the model button again. And when I move my aileron stick, you can see that my flaps are now moving as well. So as I move my stick to the left, the output for the flaps travels with the ailerons. And if I bring that rate switch down to the low position, the flaps are no longer moving with the aileron. One last item before I wrap this video up, don't be afraid to play around with your rates. If your control surface is not moving the way you expect when you apply the mix, don't be afraid to invert that sign. So you can see in my case, on the port flap, my aileron mix is negative 80 and my starboard flap, it's positive 80. And I did that just to get the correct movement on the flaps once I activated that sport flap or high rates mode. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.